Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ama ba'd Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with tawheed, with worshipping him and him alone and that's one of the a'dham things that we can do it's one of the greatest things we can do is worship Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and as Shaykh Muhammad rahimahullah ta'ala says wa'lam that the greatest thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with is Tawheed, it is monotheism. And Islamic monotheism, <coughs> monotheism consists of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and ascribing no partners with Him, uh, realizing that He has divine names and attributes, believing in them, calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by them, and realizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator, the sole creator of the heavens and earth. He's our razak, he provides for us, he sustains us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship, subhana, azza wa jalla. And so the opposite of that, as Shaykh Muhammad made clear for us, wa'adha ma naha anhu ashirk. And the greatest thing that he prohibited us from is shirk. Is worshiping besides him, other than him. And shirk is the greatest sin. It's the greatest sin that a person can do. That shirk is the is a great and grave sin that you ascribe a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you worship besides him, that you rely upon other than him, you know, with tawakkul, that you have hope in fear, you know, in the depths of the night, that someone else can harm you or bring you benefit when there's no one else around. That is only, that's only ibadah. That, all that's ibadah and that only belongs to Allah. So to violate those principles, that's shirk. And to ascribe those things, to have that kind of fear and that kind of hope in something in the creation is shirk. And so we must do everything possible to avoid shirk as it is the greatest sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this regard, That verily Allah not forgive that you ascribe partners with him but he forgives other than that for whomsoever he pleases meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive shirk that if a person dies upon it so we have to strive our best to purify our beliefs purify our actions and avoid shirk at all cost to make sure all of our worship is directed towards Allah wa ta'ala the creator of the heavens and earth because he subhanahu is the only one worthy of worship and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the shirk la dhulmun azim. In the shirk la dhulmun azim. The shirk is the greatest, or it is a, a grave sin. So, and he does not forgive it. So we learn two principles there from those two ayats. Those, the, these two verses in the Quran. First and foremost, the shirk is a grievous sin. The second thing is that a person who dies upon shirk is not forgiven. Khalidin fiha. They will be in the hellfire forever. And this is in accordance with the kitab and the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, with ijma uh, of the ummah, is that shirk is unforgivable. Meaning if you die upon shirk, but if you have committed shirk in this life and you make tawbah, you come back to Allah, you seek forgiveness for your shirk, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. He is ghafur rahim ghafur wadud He is the most forgiving, the most merciful. The most compassionate, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for a wudu. And the Prophet وسلم, said, as, as was narrated in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, قال, Akbar kabair ishraq billah wa qatl al-nafs wa aqub al-walidain wa shahadat al-zur wa ahu bukhari. So the Prophet said, 
that the greatest sin, Akbar Kabai, these are the greatest sins, and that the greatest of them, he mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam first, shirk, to associate partners with Allah or worship with Allah someone else, or to worship someone else besides Allah, or something else besides Allah, like Jesus wasalam, or Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or the angels, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, or anything in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's creation, to worship anything besides Allah, whether it be a rock, something as simple as a rock, as some people worship rocks, or something like the sun, or the moon and the stars. As Allah negates that kind of worship, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Women ayati al-layla wa nahara wa shamsu wa al-qamar la tashiru li shamsu la lil-qamar wa shiru li la yaladhi khalaquhunna in kuntum yahu ta'abhunun. Allah says, and from his signs is the day and the night, the sun and the moon. La, do not prostrate or make sujood to the, the sun, nor to the moon, but prostrate to Allah, the one who created him, in kuntum yahu ta'abhunun. If it is him you truly worship. So if you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you prostrate to him. You don't prostrate to the cow. You don't prostrate to the head of the Sikh. You don't prostrate to this one or that one. But you prostrate to Allah. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So the Prophet sallallahu said in that hadith, Akbar Kaba'im, Ishraq Billah. He said the, the greatest sin is to associate partners with Allah. Waqatala nafs. And killing yourself. Suicide. In its various forms. So whether it be suicide bombings, all of this is evil. And all of it is a type of killing yourself. And being disobedient to your parents. So we must be obedient to our parents. And to have false testimony. This is another grave sin that we must strive to avoid. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from these sins. And that we should do our best to be of those who worship him and him alone and stay away from any and all forms of shirk and being disobedient to our parents and also violating uh, and, and bearing false testimony or false witness. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from any and forms, all forms of dhunub wa ma'asi and shirk wa kufr and bid'ah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.